So here's the outside of it. This is the underneath the passenger window or above the passenger side window. And then this is where the metal bar that comes across connects in to where these two bolts were. And then this is underneath the driver's side door. There's a scallop so that it fits underneath that bow and then attaches to the header up here. So you can see over 92 years, uh, rot between the metal bar, the metal rounded piece on the top. It's just trapped it in there. And there are evidences of like this cotton fiber cloth stuff. It's like uh, padding of some sort to keep it from squeaking. So the question is now, do I try to buy this piece or do I try to make it myself it has that type of a bow to it all right so for the side rails i'm going to try to fabricate them we actually had two good pieces of white oak that had been seasoned and so i'm just going to draw it out here try to make a pattern and uh and cut it out try to save me some couple hundred bucks all right so i've drawn me a pattern on the white oak and now comes the fun part of taking a circular saw to after it. a few minutes of sawing got the first one kind of started out from the original thankfully all right i drilled and punched all the side rails out after several days and it took my metal cutting saws all blade to get the last one Arr. <laughs> okay, there's the original side rail from Henry Ford. So my question to you is, do you think it needed replacing? I was actually wondering about it, but now I think I know. Okay, so here's the passenger side side rail. And I really was wondering if it needed to be replaced because from the inside, it didn't show the signs of rot. But anyway, it's definitely had better days. But what I think is interesting to note is this groove right here that I couldn't see on my other rotted piece. That groove is critical on the new one for everything to set just right. And then also, as you can see here, at the uh, front has a chamfer on it from the factory. And you can see these little plain, plain edges. Almost looks like it's chipped. So that's what we need to reproduce. Okay, so the original piece has this scalloped side. So I was able to bring it up here and use it as kind of a, a template. So with a draw knife and with my spoke sheet here, I'm just kind of to work that
So for tri-fit number one on the side rail, I'm just gonna put a little linseed oil along here to touch off a color and see where my high spot is. I don't know that I'd recommend this to people, but this is what I do, or what I will do to make sure. It's kind of like inlaying a gun lock and a flint lock. So let's see how that is. So get it in place here. And let's see. Now I can tap the top. See dull touch color on there is where I need to relieve with my chisels. So I'll just go and stab cut down like this. White oak is stringy and very hard. So I have to use my $40 chisel for this instead of my Harbor Freight one. So I dabbed a little more linseed oil on it and I can still see after I tapped it with my mallet. That little strip of metal right there is holding me off, so I'll relieve that and relieve that and try it okay, again. Okay, so I cut that little notch out there and I've widened this out. Good. Much better. All right, so now that I have put Osfo on everything, I'm going to it with rust oleum flat black enamel with a brush so that way I don't have to worry about spraying everything. This will protect it for another 90 years hopefully from not rusting. Okay, so now as you can see I'm I've osphoed the whole rail and now I'm just gonna flat black paint it real quick to protect it from further rust. So now I'm coming in here with this brush and trying to cover up all this rust and osfo coating. The osfo helps to prepare the paint help it to stick better from what I read. Okay, so now I've got the side rails installed and I've gone back through and I've drilled the holes um, from in the frame up through and into the side rails. And then I've drilled these here so that they are flush and below flush. So that piece fits over that. And then um, I've kind of chamfered the sides in so they don't really touch the side of the um, steel frame here. So now I've got it to where all these pieces are close enough to where they can be nailed through. And I think the next thing to do is to start working on the mortise on the piece that goes, the cross piece that goes across both sides uh, here. So now I'm going to dry fit all the pieces around the rim together first. So I've got the header in place and so I would like to put the, the screws in and what better way to put screws in as to use an original Model A screwdriver courtesy of Michael Eisenbeis, my friend out in Texas and um, I love using these original tools. I think what I like most about using original Model A tools when possible is that uh, who can say who used this tool and what city or state it was used in and what Model A it was used on and 
subsequent years what other cars it was used on and the people who uh, who used it. Everyone has an interest in original Model A tools, especially to use them. But uh, for those of you who do have an interest in them, you can get uh, some of these with uh, Jesse and Jamie Eaton with Woodworks. And uh, I'll put a link for them in the description below. At times they have different um, of the original 12 or 13 Model A tools. So, uh, and reproductions like this pouch as well. So if you get a chance, go check out their website and add to your current original Model A tool collection. Okay, so now the cross piece, after mortising this here a little bit with a coping saw and some chisels, and then attaching the crossbar on both sides alone with just one bolt and nut there, it puts me in the proper alignment for the mortises on both sides, so then I can mark my holes to drill through here. And in order to get this bar in, I actually got uh, one of my old cargo bars from Harbor Freight that I had to flex. And when I squeeze this trigger, it flexes the whole frame out just a little bit, enough to squeeze that into place. And um, so I used that. But um, that's the next step is to mark these holes, drill them out, and get ready to make sure that all that lines okay, up. Okay, so now on the side rail, what I've had to do, based off what I see on the original, is go and drill the two holes there and then hog out around it so that this part of the crossbar that goes across the top of the car will fit down into there. But then the problem happens uh, to occur to me that I'm not going to be able to put a bolt through the inside and tighten over here because that's going to be against the face of the car. So I think what I'm going to do is take a carriage head bolt with that square uh, shank on it. And then after I've drilled through and hogged it out with a paddle bit over here, to put that into this side and make sure that it's below flush so it doesn't scratch or make noise in the car. Then I can put my hardware on the inside and tighten that down from the inside and as that tightens, that carriage head bolt will wrench down and hopefully not turn. So because I'm hand making this as opposed to having a store-bought one, which probably has the hardware already embedded into the wood, this is the only solution I could come up with. And if you've bought one, then this will be superfluous information. Okay, so now they're ready to put in, and I've just painted them with a flat coat, or a glossy coat of black enamel paint to give it one more layer of protection. Hopefully. Lastly, I'm taking the side rails and applying this cloth friction tape to it that I got at Ace Hardware. So that way, when the wood touches the side of the frame of the car, it doesn't squeak. So this is what I recommend, and I got this from a couple of good sources. And um, I recommend also that you put a little glue down before you apply it, because this stuff usually is old, doesn't come off the shelves very often, and it is... Um, the stick to it doesn't do too well. So the last thing you want to do is get it in the, the Model A and then it come loose. So I've applied a little bead of just wood glue down before I put it Here on. Here is the side rail that I've fabricated after I've painted it. I'm not gonna say it looks store-bought, but I think it'll work. Now I went installing the side rails back on, make sure if you remember these two that'll go back behind or at least the one will go back behind the rail there so now the uh the middle bar goes in between the side rails and i'm just standing in my seat here I have to put the two um, carriage head bolts in first and then take this and swing it out pop it in and then swing it back in and then attach all this now, after just loosely getting the side rails in, I'm just loosely putting the header in there, sliding it up in those tabs right there, just like so. And now I'm just loosely going in and adding all the hardware 
not bolting anything down, but making sure everything fits among itself. The other side of the header, with the help of my original Model A screwdriver, of course. There we go. Not seem like much, but as of right now, the side rails are replaced. The crossbar is replaced. The header is replaced everything is bolted in and so that pretty much takes care of the top or at least the sides of the top now i've got to start on the ribs but um anyway i'm very thankful to the lord to be able to replace all this wood at this point we'll conclude this video and the next one, I'll start on the back header and the ribs, Lord's willing. Get those replaced and then maybe start on the top fabric. Thank you for watching.